Welcome to Finch Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. My name is Kevin DeBrita, and today I've got with me a 2LT Chevrolet Corvette C8. I tried shooting this video the other day, and uh, I went 20 minutes in and forgot that I did not hit record. So I'm checking right now, and I am hitting record. We're gonna hop in and take a up close look at this vehicle. I'm gonna flip that camera around. I'm gonna get it running. Oh, that's beautiful. So nice. Oh, I gotta wake up the keys. Keys have been sitting for a little while, so I'm gonna shake them, and that should get it. There we go. Fantastic. So I'm gonna do kind of a once over from this side all the way across. And if we've got time, I'll get into some radio details. I may shoot a second video on the radio details. Starting with the uh, furthest outside buttons, these are our memory seats. You've got driver number one, driver number two, and your easy exit seat. To program these, it's as simple as hitting the set and the one you want to program at the same time. And you'll hear beep, beep, beep. There we go, and now, driver number one has been programmed moving up we've got our power mirrors pass driver mirror passenger mirror and those can all be adjusted using this control right here below that we have our power folding option this can also be programmed into the driver information center so when you double lock it on the way out you can have them fold and then we have our express up and express down windows so oftentimes with the express down or the express up, you'll push the window and you'll want to stop it somewhere and it won't stop. So the easiest thing to do is while it's going in the direction you want it to go in, just pull it again or push it again and it will stop where you want it to stop. Also, you can kind of notice there's two little indents. If you only pull the first indent, it will only go up a little bit. Pull it all the way, it'll go up all the way. Just gonna open the door for a minute so I can get a better look at these buttons here. So we have our um, open or unlock button. Sorry, open button. And then we have unlock and lock for your power door locks. Important thing to note is on the floor on both the driver and passenger side is this release right here. In the event you're in the vehicle and you have no power, this button doesn't work. So you wanna make sure that you're familiar with this. This will pull a cable that will open up the door and allow you to get out of the vehicle without any power. Hiding in down here, we have our frunk or the trunk in the front of the vehicle, and then the trunk or engine compartment in the back of the vehicle. And that rounds up all of our controls on the door. You see we have our Bose performance system. We might listen to that sound a little bit later. Down in underneath the dash, we've got our emergency brake or parking brake. So that's a simple push to set. You might have heard that and then foot on the brake, push to release. And just above that, that is your dash lights and that will control the intensity of your dash lights up in here at nighttime when it's dark. So we can actually see it is dark enough right now. I can get it to dim down and brighten it all the way back up. So kind of nice how you get that animation. Back in here, right behind the steering wheel, so you won't actually see it while you're driving, is our heads-up display controls. We have head-up position, so this moves it up and down so it's in the proper position for you to see. We can change the information that we're looking on that heads-up display, and then we can change the brightness of that heads-up display. If you're not familiar with heads-up display, just gonna pull it up here. You can see it right in the center. Actually, this is showing up fairly well. So we can move that heads up display up and down and you can see the corners. So you wanna be able to see all four corners and you know you're in a good spot. Then we have our different screens that we can look at within our heads up display. And I'm just toggling that middle switch now to get to all of those screens. No other buttons in behind except for hiding back in here. This is our power tilt and telescopic steering. So tilt and telescopic steering is programmed into both your easy exit position and your memory seats. So you wanna make sure that you get that in the position you want it for in your driving position as well as in your exit position to make it easier to get in and out. 
just gonna close up the uh, door so it's a little bit quieter in here. I'm gonna turn down the fan speed. Perfect, and the radio is already off. And now we're looking at our steering wheel. So over on the left-hand side, we have our Z mode configuration, which is programmable. So just kind of recycling that button. And when we go through, uh, actually it just popped up. This is fantastic. So you can see where we have everything programmed uh, for our uh, engine sound, steering, suspension, engine. Um, all of that was showing up when I hit our Z mode so we know exactly what we have everything programmed to. Over here we have our cruise control on and off. We can resume our cruise control and set our cruise control and then a quick little cancel button down on the side here. Favorites, this is for your radio station. So once you've programmed in a couple of favorites, you can pull on that and actually you can see right now we are moving through our favorites up and down just by using these toggles and easiest to grasp from the back. On the opposite side, we have our heated steering wheel for those cool summer nights, voice activation button, telephone button, mute button, so you can hang up the telephone or mute the radio. And then this is gonna control your driver information center. So I'm just kind of going down through our main menu with our trip computer. Trip one, trip two, fuel economy numbers, timers. Then I can move into our performance menu. So there is a, a zero to 60 time that you can actually do within the vehicle. and. Uh, as soon as I start to accelerate, it's gonna start counting off and I can check my zero to 60 time. Not something I recommend when the vehicle is brand new. You'll notice while we're looking at the tachometer, it actually redlines fairly soon. The more miles you put on this vehicle, and I wanna say it's somewhere between about 800 kilometers and 2000 kilometers, you will actually see the red line change and you'll be able to rev the vehicle up higher than you will right now as, uh, as it goes past its break-in period. See what else is in that performance. We have lap timers, in case you're going around the track. This is our G-forces. So this little ball in the middle here is actually gonna move from left to right and up and down, depending on how you're driving the vehicle and how many G-forces you are experiencing. And then we've got, uh, oh, I went up too far, keep going. Lap configurator, oh, we did get them all. Moving across to the audio. And all I'm doing is moving right to left over here to get into the different uh, menus. Then we've got our maintenance or engine oil, transmission fluid, air filter, revs, engine hours, idles, and back to fluid. So that's all in your maintenance. And display options. So I haven't played with this much myself, but let's look at our display design. Currently it is linked to a driver mode, but we can also set it up in touring, sport, track, and weather. So I'm gonna leave it linked to driver mode from now because we'll be able to play with that. Info tile selection, so we can actually change what we want to see in our driver information center. Not something most people would change unless they are racing, but you do have the option. This one is really nice. Speed warning. If you don't have it on the track, I usually recommend setting a speed warning. Now in Ontario, if you're doing 50 over the speed limit, they're gonna impound your car. So I have a lot of customers will set this up at about 140 kilometers, which is still a really hefty ticket, uh, but it will prevent you from having your car impounded. Almost there, I'm just kind of wheeling up right here to get up to 140. And we've now got that turned on. Going to the back button, units is where you'd switch from miles to kilometers. Very easy to do that. Tire pressures, you can relearn your tire pressure monitors from here. Heads up rotation, if you find that it, your heads up display is not straight and you just need to rotate it from right to left, that's gonna be controlled in here. You can also relearn new keys and then check all of your licensing and reset things back to default. So those last two you're not likely to use. Gonna go over to our uh, option menu, which we were just in. And the last one, simplify. 
press to simplify display. That is something I've not played with yet. And that just takes away that side of information. So there's a quick run through on our driver information center built in. Over here you can see we've got uh, our time, our temperature, our oil pressure, uh, 77 degrees outside. Uh, sorry, that's our coolant, that's 77 degrees. We've got five kilometers on the car and our fuel range of 648 kilometers and all these bars are lit up so we do have a full tank and we're currently facing west. Now let's take a quick look down the uh, center console here and some of these controls. So we have our climate control system that can be activated either on the touchscreen radio or through this line of buttons. So we have our temperature for our driver up at the top, heated and ventilated seats. We can sync the temperature between the driver and the passenger, which is way down here. Turn on our automatic climate control. There we go, I'm just gonna get them both about 20 degrees. Where we want the air to flow when we're not using our automatic climate control. Fan speed, we can turn the whole system off turn our AC system off to maximize our power, and then uh, recirculatory air, front defrost, rear defrost, and then heated and ventilated seat and temperature controls for the passenger. Now, if you haven't driven one of these yet, uh, you'll probably find this really interesting. So this is our transmission interface. You can currently see that we're highlighted in park. We have our reverse and our drive buttons. So you're going to pull if you want to move. So pull it up to put us in reverse. Our backup camera is illuminated. And then to go into drive, we're going to also pull. And our forward is, uh, camera is illuminated. We can turn lines off and on. So if you want to see the grid lines, you can turn those off and on with the last button. There's also a couple of different camera angle views that are available. So you can see those two split front cameras and then your top down version. And then we have our regular rear view, or sorry, wide rear view and our regular rear view. We've also got a couple of buttons here. Neutral is a push button and manual mode is a push button. So to use a manual mode, first we're gonna shift it into drive, then we're gonna override it to manual, and then we're gonna use these magnesium shifters to move up and down through our gears. So we've got up on the right and down on the left. I'm gonna put the vehicle back into park simply by pushing the park button. The other thing that's really good to note is if you turned off the vehicle in drive or reverse, when you turn the vehicle off, it automatically goes into park. Above that, we've got a couple of things. We've got our traction control, which we can turn on and off. We have our front end lift. And so if you want to lift the front end, you would push this button. And then to program that spot into the 1,000 programmable positions, we would hit this button right here on the steering wheel. I haven't yet found out if you can uh, delete those programmed positions, uh, but most likely with 1,000 spots to memorize, you're unlikely to run out of spots. And then if you want to put your front camera up, I really like that they added this button here. So as we're pulling up, we can illuminate our front camera and ensure that we're not going to hit the uh, front fascia on any curbs or uh, larger speed bumps. Really cool feature. And then this with our Corvette logo is our mode selector. A little bit over the top, but this car is over the top. So we can see right now this is our my mode position. We have our weather display. And then I'm gonna turn it over to the ones that are gonna be programmed. We have our touring mode, sport mode, and you'll see how that all changed when we moved into sport mode, and track mode. And so all as I'm doing is moving this from right to left, the little wheel 